awesome. Come on out, guys. It's time for the review. What's going on, everybody? We have got the last and final battle log kit. Thanks for sticking with me through all 10 of these reviews. Let's get right into it. <clears throat> right away with the box, I'm really feeling the orange and green. These tropical colors are a lot of fun. It almost feels like a vaporwave aesthetic. Like, Wing Zero decided to be some, like, uh, Japanophilic, like, Xanax addict. Going on the side, it, I don't see a ton of, like, new, new stuff with it. And the box is smaller than some of the other battle log boxes, but the double O Quant was Quanto was also a smaller box, but had a lot to offer. So let's just dive right in. Man, these colors really are lovely. Got the instruction manual we've got. Wing zero. Let's open her up and see what other... So they're talking about recommending Bile, the Master Gundam, and the Destiny Gundam because they all have similar wings, but I wonder what design cues they will have that are similar. Let's go. Starting right off, we got some beam saber parts. The green is nice. I love, love these blues. We got some more black parts, which I feel like we've seen other with the uh, the old Crunchwrap Supreme Strike Freedom. So that's fine. Some good lines on these as well. Now this is interesting. We've got these... We have navy polycaps, which is pretty cool. Um, I have, haven't seen navy polycaps before, so that's interesting. It'll be nice to like have it blend in a little more and not poke out, so that's a nice touch for sure. We have another tiny little piece. Uh, this convex lens, I'm assuming that's going to be for the center core piece. Some nice details on these light like cool gray like wings lovely lines here on the legs as well parts the v-fin while being uh four pieces here is only one piece which is really nice going back to uh, our friend uh taco bell menu item strike freedom that two-part v-fin really was not it so this, I'm really happy to see. These other orange pieces are lovely. It doesn't look like these are going to be covered with a ton of stickers either, which is even better. So we can just get in there and line them up and it'll be great. Uh, we have a single piece. I don't know why. Couldn't I just like, boom, put it there. But that's okay. Um, matte stickers for the most part with a few nice metallic greens. Um, it is what it is. More leg parts, more wing parts. Oh goodness, pardon me. The crown is nice there. The rest of the head and the back as well. And then we got all of our technical little bits. This is really nice too because there is not any... There are no gray. There are no gray pieces, I'm realizing. That's really interesting. Um, I keep saying um, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to do an honest reaction. But no gray pieces is a very interesting, like, stylistic choice. So when all said and done and this is built, uh, there shouldn't be any of those, like, outlier, like, off-the-wall gray pieces that you get when you're looking at other kits. Uh, so this should be nice to add to the, like, color homogeneous, homogeneousness. Is that a word? Uniformity in colors. Let's build it. Now, if you've taken on any iteration of the Wing Gundam, you should be able to build this in autopilot, especially since 
this release is virtually indistinguishable from high grade 174 wing gundam zero 2014 release the only thing different is that they changed some colors the wing pieces do have a rather large gate on them so i would be mindful of your cuts make sure you don't get any nasty stress marks on those the shoulders are pretty neat because they do have hidden veneers that pop open in like a three segment part the shoulders, which we'll touch on later, are very weak, and it's rather frustrating. Almost as frustrating as the fact that the original release of this kit was only $13, but they somehow added nothing new and increased the price to $26. And here we have our finished product, Sans the Accessories. This will be the last time you see him without an action base. you got to keep those wings pretty close to the body. To be able to stand him up without any of these things overall it's pretty static and uninteresting there's a few good spots on the back skirting for some panel lines i will say though at least they did a really good job picking the colors with the dark blue poly caps the the overall like color palette blends really well and gives a nice homogenous almost vaporwave feel First pose of the action base, we got him presumably falling down into the atmosphere with his buster rifle preparing to take a shot. You can see how lovely that convex lens on the chest is and those foil stickers reflecting all of that light. Nextly, we've got him charging forward with his beam sabers. There is a little notch on the beam saber to keep it held in the hand. The hands are pretty static, which is on one hand nice because you don't have to take the hand apart over and over again like you do the live lance, but there's no gesticulation articulation. You can see the verniers on the bottom of the feet and the ones concealed when you open up the wings a little bit. Next we have the rolling buster shot. If you have played any of the G generation games this is the map weapon you want to choose you can really see those lovely blues and oranges and greens bounce off each other as we have him all the way spread out I would have really liked some stickers on those orange bits on the shoulders however we opted instead to panel line them and that's okay the skirting on either side the black pieces seem a little too long for their own good maybe all together even and lastly we're gonna have that final shot to destroy the colony with the buster rifle all put together i wish we had some kind of expressive hand because you can't have both hands holding this rifle when it's combined together so having some kind of gesturing hand to at least put on the stock would make it feel less awkward now let's cover these shoulders. We're going to swivel those legs down and try to move those arms a little bit and just it instantly just pops off. The gaps in the shoulders are much too large for their own good, causing the PC2 to swivel backwards and get stuck. As you can see here, it is pushed all the way back and the socket is not deep enough to secure it well when it's there so you have to fish out a piece or try to use that socket to push it forward orienting it forward you can then put the arm back in but you will almost certainly pop the arm back out once you're in there go there goes the other one this oh I mean, at least it's canon that Hero did self-destruct the Wing Gundam, so like, A for like, canon accuracy, because this thing is a hand grenade. Like I said, pop them in when you pull them forward, you can try to use that as an anchor. Overall, it's just not, not good though. Lastly, let's transform this hot mess into a bird. While not different at all than the other release, it's still fun to transform it. I kind of want to put on the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers theme song and vibe a little bit while we 
do the transformation sequence, attaching the buster rifle, spinning the torso around. The shoulders are going to fold down. My issue comes with the feet. I don't like that we have to remove the foot pieces from the poly cap, further loosening the connection because those poly caps are soft and malleable to replace it with pre-folded foot parts and also remove the veneers from the bottom of the actual feet to place them in here. That doesn't bode well with me. Going into this build, I was excited and then disappointed that there was nothing new brought to the table. My disappointment was further exacerbated by the fact that we were being charged double for this kit that was previously released in 2014 for $13 with nothing being changed. But by the end of the build, I didn't even care that we didn't have anything new brought to the table. I was just frustrated that we couldn't have even fixed the issues with the original release. If they would have just strengthened those shoulders, maybe given us a foot that could fold and transform a little better, those would at least be bonus points worth talking about, but we couldn't even get that. And I try not to be super negative on these reviews because I don't want to just be known as some sourpuss, miserable bald man that complains like some original trilogy Star Wars fan about everything and anything. But it's just kind of ridiculous how blatant Bandai is ripping us off with this kit. I mean, they've added nothing new. They've they changed the colors and that was it. The price got increased from $13 to $26, and they didn't fix any issues at all. Worse even is that this kit and the other three villain kits, number 7 through 10 in the set, are being released as premium Bandai outside of the U.S. And that's outrageous, because this kit isn't worth the standard release slot that we got, let alone a premium Bandai slot. So unless you are the biggest Wing Gundam stan, I just don't know that I would recommend this kit, guys. And I really wanted to like it more because I love the color scheme. We did it, guys. We got through all 11 of the Gundam Breaker Battlelog kits. If you've tuned in for all of them, I really appreciate it. The original one with the Goof Custom was a little rough, and we've gradually built up and improved along the way. At least I hope we have. I know my setup's gotten better, if nothing else. And now that we're through all these, we can just wait for other stuff and I can start getting to the other things in my backlog. I have all kinds of kits, so if there's anything in particular you guys would like to see, like definitely comment down below. I realize, though, having finished this, we haven't done a master grade on the channel yet, and that's where I need your help. I'm going to have pictures of four different master grade or equivalent kits after this little segment. You guys let me know down below which one you want me to build first as our inaugural master grade on the channel, and that's what we'll do. The voting will be live from the release date of this video for one week until next Monday, and then I will set off to build that. Thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it, and if... You like the voting interaction type stuff, and you have other people who like Gunpla, just make sure to like, share, and subscribe, because once I can get the community tab, then I can just post polls and be less obtrusive. You guys can just be like, oh, what's this dumb egg want? Vote for this, vote for that. <clears throat> and together we'll build everything. My backlog's not going down anytime soon. <laughs> I have a problem. Anywho, thanks so much for watching, guys.